Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of How to Scale an Agency. I'm on with Chad Cottery. He has a company which a lot of you guys might have heard of, Dash Clicks. I've actually heard of them before, but never had a chance to use the platform or talk to the man himself. But he's got a very similar story to what we're doing here at Twiz, and I'm really excited to hear about it in detail on this call right now. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, however you're listening to this or watching this, thank you for, so much, Chad, for, for hopping on. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to speak to you and your audience. I know we share similar journeys. So for those agency owners that are out there watching this, I'm sure you're gonna guys, you guys are going to get a bunch of golden nuggets throughout this journey. Absolutely love it. So let's start from the beginning. You went the software route after scaling your agency. Can you give me a sense of like what kind of scale did you hit for the agency? Was it an early decision where you decided we're just going to ditch yeah, the agency yeah. after like a couple of clients or was it already scaled up and you were you decided to move? Yeah, so I can, I'll kind of walk you through my journey really quick. So um, I opened my digital marketing agency called Social Agency. It's actually still open. Uh, it's just on kind of autopilot. And funny enough, it's Social Agency or agency is one of Dashclicks' clients, right? So you kind of think yep. about that. <laughs> um, so um, we started in 2009, uh, and it yeah. was it was a failure of an agency. I'm just going to be completely honest. For the first four <laughs> years, right? First year in business, I, I started out of my probably most like most people listening to this. I started, uh, I was 21 at the time, um, started, uh, I was living at my mom's house, single, um, had no job. And uh, I was like, screw it. I'm just going to start an agency. Uh, one right. thing I want everybody to note is there was no such thing as like a dash clicks back then or like courses or like people that can help you or coaching or like you were on your own, right? <laughs> So like I had to figure out like nowadays there's all this stuff that agencies have that they can just get handed to them and they can literally just be right. maybe good at sales and they can run this whole operation, right? Or build a sales team or even get closers, right? So there's there's so much yeah. leverage that people have now being 2022. But when I started, it was 2009. We're talking about it was 13, 12, 13 years ago, right? Over a decade yeah. ago. So in, in first year in business, um, uh, I did $4,000 in sales, whole year, full time. Right. I was like, man, this is like really horrible. I could have worked at McDonald's and made way more money than this, right? Uh, and then I had my mom coming in the room uh, every couple of days. She's like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, this is like, this doesn't seem like this is panning out. I'm like, don't worry. I got this. Next year is going to be better. <laughs> Next year comes, boom, 15K in revenue, year two. Whole year, full time, like 70 hours a week. I was grinding through, right? Trying to figure it all out. Horrible. Third year, uh, I think we did like 32,000, 40. Right. We did like uh, maybe like 50,000 or something like that, right? And I'm talking right. about years. This is a long time, right? Years yeah. is a long time. And a year four, I was just, I, I took a look at everything I was doing. I was like, all right, this this obviously is not working. Like for a 50K year, I can just go work somewhere else and not have to deal with all this, you know, stress of own, uh, owning your own company and entrepreneurship and all that stuff, right? Um, yeah. But I decided to take a couple of weeks and I was like, you know what? Some, I'm not doing something right, right? Um, so one of the biggest things that I actually looked at was it was this huge company. It was called Madwire Media. You might be familiar with oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, they're the base out in Colorado. We started at the same time in 2009. I was like, dude, these guys have like 300 employees and they started four years ago when I started. How come I don't have 300 employees and millions of dollars in revenue? Why am I, right. doing, you know, what's the difference, right? So for the next couple of weeks, I literally stopped everything that I was doing. Literally, I was like, let me stop doing everything. I'm not taking on any more clients. I'm not doing anything. Right. Let me just figure this out. Let me just deep dive. So I started doing some crazy R&D uh, and the, the, probably one of the stupidest things, but the most realistic thing that actually came to mind of why I was failing was one major thing. During the four years, I was selling a lot of stuff that was one-off services, right? Mm. I was selling like a website design and then that person would never reach out to me again. Or I was doing graphics or I was doing um, printing. I used to do printing back in the day, right? I would sub it out yeah. to a, a, a trade contractor, right? And what I realized was nobody was paying me recurring subscriptions. So mm. year five comes around and I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to take out the hundred of service. I was like this one-stop shop doing everything. I was like, I'm going to stop. Right. And this was like the 80, 20 rule. I was like, I'm going to stop doing this. And I'm only going to focus on 10 or less services, things that are recurring subscriptions that people would pay me for every single month. And I can maybe even get contracts on. I'm going to put all my energy in that basket. Right. Mm. And that was Google ads, Facebook ads, SEO, um, uh, social media posting, directory listings, um, like those specific services are what I was out and I was actually selling. Right. right. So I flipped it all around and that was the first big light bulb moment for me. Second big light bulb moment for me was what I was doing. I was waiting back. So I was always building websites like back in the day. I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, 
Um, <laughs> SEO, the way that it worked is you build the website, you build like a hundred city pages and you start ranking for all the city pages. And then you would start getting people calling you. That's all I was doing. I was like behind the scenes, like coding <laughs> out these websites, building hundreds of pages. And I would just wait by the phone for someone to call me or wait on my email for an email to come in. I was waiting for incoming leads for literally four years. And mm. that does not work. So the second light bulb moment that I have was <laughs> I need to attack the market with what right. I have in my arsenal, right? What I want to sell. So I started doing cold calling. I got really, really right. good at cold calling. That was the second thing that I did. And then the third team, uh, third thing that I did was I stopped wearing all of the hats, right? Mm -hmm. So I started, like I would get an order and then I would fulfill the order. And then I would have to do the customer service, the billing, the, like all of that stuff, right? I was just doing everything, right? Think about right. it. Online. Like there's one guy literally doing everything, right? I changed those three things in that year. And in year five, I did 588K. So I went from 50K mm -hmm. to 588K in one year, right? Mm -hmm. Massive difference. And, and by the yeah. way, uh, for those of you guys out there, you're like, Chad, would you hire 10 people? No, that was with me and one person, right? And then so probably awesome. towards, <laughs> towards the end of the, and the one person I hired, her name was Angie. She was basically my first fulfillment uh, employee. She was doing all, right. the, fulfilling all the orders that I was selling, right? Uh, and then towards the end of the year, I ended up hiring my first appointment center fronter, probably last three or four years, uh, three or four months out of that year, right? Who was just scheduling appointments. So I was like, I'm I'm scheduling enough appointments. Let me show somebody else how to do it, right? So that's what we did. Then the year after that, I did 860,000. Then I did 1.2, then I did 1.6. And it just kept growing year over year, right? And we started right. building out sales floors. I had a whole call center with about 13 people, sales reps full-time. Um, yeah. with appointment centers in Philippines and Nicaragua, we were all over the place, right? So we grew right. our agency to a couple million dollars in revenue, uh, recurring yeah. revenue uh, every single year. Um, and then in about 2014, uh, we uh, one agency actually came to us um, and he's like, hey, uh, we got like 20 clients and we just don't want to do the fulfillment. Uh, we lost our main fulfillment person. Right. And to like to hire somebody in training, we're just really good at sales. We don't want to do the fulfillment, right? So we're like, screw it. We're really good at fulfillment because we got it down. Like we've been doing fulfillment for hundreds of clients. It's been like yeah. you know, seven, six, seven years later, right? Um, so we actually started doing white label for, for this one agency. And then we got good at it. And then we picked up another one and another one. And we're like, okay, we're fulfilling for like five agencies, 10 agencies, right? We're like, oh yeah, this is pretty good. Like they're getting good results. Like our process is okay, right? Without having like yeah. softwares or anything like that. So um, we started actually developing a software for actually for us to manage our own clients. Um, right. And that was, and not even for Dashlicks. It wasn't supposed to be Dashlicks. That's a funny story, right? We we never built Dashlicks for, for agencies. We built Dashlicks for ourselves. It was yeah. a way for us to manage our own clients um, and show reporting and stuff like that. So we built out the software um, and I have a partner, which is one of our co-founders. His name is Carlos, he's our CTO. He's the guy behind the, the, the software writing all the code, right? Right. And, uh, and uh, we, we get to this point where he's like, all right, it's ready to go. Do you want me to push all the code live and like get all the clients in there? And I'm like, right. you know what? I have a feeling that other people are going to want to use this too. Right. <laughs> how, how long would it take if we just made it where like we had a website and people could sign up and like get free accounts? Right. They could like use their own software. He's like, give me like three months. I was like, all right, cool. Go for it. Do it. Right. So we go three months later, he's got this, this new software. And by the way, the, the, the software wasn't even called Dashlicks. We didn't have a domain name. We had nothing, right? Right. And then I was like, all right, what are we going to call it? And I, like, I started going to look for domain names. I found Dashlicks was like the shortest domain name. It was the coolest name, right? I was like, boom, <laughs> bought Dashlicks is the name of the company. Um, we are going to offer agencies a dashboard to manage their business, right? And that's what we're going to do, right? And then we were just doing white label fulfillment behind the scenes. We didn't even have a store or anything in there. We weren't planning on doing white label fulfillment through the Dashlicks platform, right? So we launch in this one group. Um, my good friend, Robert, uh, Rob Quinn from the sales agency, we launched in his group. We did like an affiliate launch. We had like a thousand people sign up within 24 hours, create their wow. free Dashlicks account, right? Um, and then it started going viral. Right. And then kind of fast forward today, um, we service over 30,000 plus digital marketing agencies. Um, Dashix <laughs> is, is in almost every single country. We are the number one uh, white label fulfillment provider, in my opinion, the entire world with the best prices, the best software. Um, we've literally built something that was game changing that I wish I had in 2009. All my wishes came true in this new software platform and we're reinventing. We're pushing yeah. the code live every Tuesday. So we got new updates coming out. Um, and uh, that's kind of where we are today. That's amazing. And did you ever decide to go down like the fundraising route or did you do this all bootstrapped? 
completely bootstrapped. Um, we've just yeah. been profitable since day one, which is great. Um, and uh, hopefully we can continue maybe going down that route. But who knows what that's fantastic. Is. So you you started off with the free version. I'm actually toying with uh, well, we do have a free version, um, but you know, I haven't really pushed it too hard. Um, but it sounds like from that, I mean, I might now because that's a great idea. Because uh, that got your all your initial users, and then you converted them, and you had a bunch of you know, you had an easy, obvious, and, and, and reasonable way for them to scale up. So I guess um, with thirty thousand agencies. Uh, can you give me a, a, a sense for um, what your advice would be to agencies uh, in terms of if they should launch a software or a course? Because I get I do a lot of these like weekly AMAs where I'll, I'll get yeah. people ask me questions and they say, what would you do differently if you launched your agency over again? And we launched about five years ago. But the thing is that what I would tell them is I'd say, look, I don't think you should launch an agency first. That's my advice. I say, what you should do is launch something like a course or something. If you want to go software, do a software, but like agencies are really difficult to scale because you have people, but if you have like a really good brand and all this content and you have a course and all these people are eating it up, then you could just launch an agency on top and you have all that trust. You don't have to worry about the trust or the authority piece. I'm curious to see if, if your advice differs at all. And, I, and I'd, I'd love to it know. It does why. a bit. And yeah. I think I think that that is what Dashflix is. I think the the sexiness factor of Dashflix and the reason why so many people love us and use us is because it really kind of seems like it's like unreal. Um, and right. think about this for a second. You can come in as a brand new person. Forget about being an agency owner or a software creator, whatever it is that you are, right? Let's just say the everyday person that wants to be an entrepreneur can literally go to our website, create a free account with absolutely no credit card, no nothing. We don't ask for anything. You create a free account, boom, you're on the free version. And it's enough for you to just get into the game, right? It's enough for right. you to start using it and understand what, what it is, right? Um, and then on top of that, you can fulfill, you can go out and sell something, right? And we give you all the tools that you need, like Instasites and intro reports. We have all these different prospecting tools, which makes it easy for you to actually sell services, right? And then when you sell the services, somebody in the back end, you have all this, this whole tech, all the techie and nerdy guys in the back end, the marketers, just like myself, right? They're all in the background. Right. They're waiting for you. They're waiting for an order to come in, right? When right. an order comes in, they're going to fulfill it for you. So you can fulfill on your promises, right? right. So you literally just need to be a, a, a person that can communicate with another human being in order yeah. to have a successful agency using Dash. Right. You don't need to hire people. You don't need to scale up a fulfillment team. You don't need to do any of that. You just need to be a good communicator and be able right. to say, hey, these are the services that I have. Do you want it? This is the software that right. I have. Dash is, you don't need to build the software. Our whole software is completely white labeled. You smack your logo right. on there. You can add sub accounts, unlimited sub accounts. All your clients can go in there, right? And they also get access to Dashflix. They get the CRM and all of our other tools that we have in there, right? Right. So it's like, I think nowadays, like, you don't need to do anything. The easiest route would literally be to just come in, be right. a really good communicator and start selling. I think anything that you do, if you don't have the sales process behind it, you're going to fail yeah. no matter what. That's the first domino that you need to tip over, right? So right. if you come in and we, we're like, hey, you tip this domino over, we'll tip the rest of them over. We'll do all the other work for you, right? Yeah. That's kind of what Dashflix is. So in my opinion, I'm a big believer in anybody can start an agency if you were right. to communicate and talk to people. 100%. And then how does this compare to a company like uh, Go High Level? Because I know that's another one that people use a lot yep. for similar yeah, functions. Yeah, so we're, 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 we're pretty similar. Um, Go High Level is a great company. So I have nothing bad to say about them, obviously. Um, I think we do have differences as far as software. Like we do things differently. They do things differently. Um, one big thing is our white label fulfillment is different in the sense that when you're ordering white label fulfillment, you're ordering it from dash clicks. It's actually yeah. us, our team, everybody's full W2, like employed by dash clicks, security by dash clicks, right? Nobody's going to steal your right. contract like that. You're not ordering it like in a marketplace or like with a vendor or something like that. Right. Yeah. So one process, one place, you get an account manager, you speak to one person for all your accounts, all your services, everything right. in the one house, basically. So right. it makes the process so much easier. Um, that's from the yeah. fulfillment side. So I so, think that's the major difference. Yeah, it's it's actually so funny because literally everything that you built is basically what we had the plan to build uh, because we had the same distinction with Kohai Level. We were thinking, we don't have a fulfillment side yet, but we were thinking like, that was the issue, what, from my opinion, I think it's a good tool, but like 
they are using this marketplace and they don't actually fulfill it themselves. But if you did some kind of it yourself, then you could actually maybe maintain the quality a little better. That's and exactly have like what we do. Deals. So it's, yeah. it's the dash clicks quality. It's we train our own employees. They go through our certifications in the back end, right? We put our stamp of approval on it, right? We do our reporting. When you integrate everything, all the connections that you integrate into the yeah. platform from our fulfillment services, it's in one place. One place. Yeah. All you need. So I'm actually curious because, uh, so, so basically, you, yeah, you do everything in one place. Analytics, dashboard, contacts, deals, forms. I mean, it's pretty much your entire CRM and everything you would need to scale your agency in one place. If yeah. anyone listening this doesn't know about you yet, that's sure. We're, we like to, we like to call ourselves is. like a sales, marketing, and automation platform. That's kind of what yeah, we do. Yeah, 100%. And, and do you guys, so I'm actually curious, like, um, have you ever thought about, mainly, man, this might be a selfish question, but have you ever thought about getting into the same kind of model as like Upwork or Bark or these things where basically people can actually, um, you, you get the leads that come through the website the same way you're talking about. And essentially what you do is, um, you arbitrage those leads out to people who are interested in like hot inbound leads for different yeah. things. That would be is like the ever- vendor model or the marketplace model, right? So yeah, it's a, exactly. Be is that like on the horizon or is it, is it's you staying in the same? Yeah. Ours, our, our, and that, that's kind of like, like a go high level or a vendor or like those types of marketplaces, right? Yeah. Go buy from other people. A big, um, a big thing that we stand by is if we're going to offer something and we're going to sell it, it needs the dash clicks stamp of approval. I can't yeah, put yeah. my eggs in somebody else's basket. I don't have that trust. Right. Totally get that. So what is on the horizon then for you guys? I mean, 30,000 people using it. Is it, um, those are 30,000 people have signed up or do you, you have 30,000 agencies on the platform? Signed, signed up and they're, they're all agencies. Yeah. We only service agencies. So there's more than that in sub accounts or whatever you want to call it, their clients. Right. But yeah, 30,000 yeah. agencies have been through the platform um, on the free account. Obviously not everybody is 100% active users. Right. Um, right. but we do have a pretty good amount of active users that are using the platform every single day to run their business and their client's business. And then obviously yeah. then there's the whole fulfillment side, right? Where we have fulfillment and then we also have our coaching side. So there's three main legs to Dashflix. We're a software yeah. company, um, we're a, a fulfillment company, and then we're also a coaching company. So we have our whole coaching side called Dash Elite, where we do coaching for agencies. And then it's kind of like we build, the whole point is to build all those three things in. Where now as you come in as this entrepreneur who knows nothing about the agency space, we coach you on how to sell it, use our software to run the whole right. business. And when you bring on clients, we fulfill for you. So we're like the bank. We basically do it 100%. all for you. Come to us for everything. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy, man. I, I just think it's it's so cool. It's so inspir- inspirational. I think a lot of people, um, look, what you've done, which I think is really interesting, is is you've you've taken care of, of what I always tell people is the biggest concern. And I actually knew about you guys, but I didn't. I didn't actually really understand in detail everything you did from the fulfillment side. Um, so hearing this is actually really encouraging because now I'm just going to tell people go use you guys because the <laughs> hardest thing, the reason I tell people not to build a, an agency first is because they there's like this, this revenue trap where you think you're making a lot of profit or you think you're making a lot of money, but then your profit actually lowers the more revenue you make at the beginning because you have to go hire people really? and people are unpredictable and you have to build these systems out. So yeah. you sometimes actually are more, you're making more money often when you're just starting and that your first like 10, 15 K a month, than when you're at like 50, 60 K a month. So yeah, what yeah. that does with the brand, it does with the content. If you didn't have a solution like dash clicks, <laughs> it allows you to maintain a high profit margin. But if they have a solution like dash clicks and then they also have the content and they have a course and all this stuff, then their margin is going to be insane, right? So yeah, margins, really I can give you stats on those too. So like average margins are like between 60% to 90% uh, on our yeah. products, right? right? And I'll give you an example. We have at Facebook ads starting at $199 a month for white label fulfillment, completely right. for you. Google ads at 199, SEL for 199, social media posting starting at $49 a month, content starting at $59 a month, right? We are, we have, between automations and software and processes, we've we have the lowest, and I'm not going to say the right. word cheapest because people think that that's like a dirty word, right? It's cheap. Yeah. It's not, we have the lowest prices, if not the lowest prices, in the entire market, and we still right. we still hold to very high quality standards, which is almost yeah. impossible to find. No, it's insane. So, what percentage of your? I mean, if you're a you don't have to. This is, I always give, this is not a gotcha show. There's a lot of gotcha shows out there, but uh, we're not one of them. 
So uh, you don't have to share this if you don't want to, but any details you're able to share in terms of the size you guys have gotten to is always really inspirational for people, especially starting out because there's not a lot of stories of people who've actually built an agency and successfully scaled a software on top of it. So if you are open to sharing any of this, like one more info on size would be really interesting too. At, now that you're 13 years in, how much of the percentage of your like revenue, you don't, you don't have to say revenue if you don't want to, but how much would is you would you say is software and how much would you say is like the services fulfillment side of yeah, the business? Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty split. Um, fulfillment's always been a we've been doing fulfillment for way before we've had software, so fulfillment's definitely a bigger chunk. We're known for our fulfillment. I think right now we're getting known for our software because we just yeah. launched version two of Dashlix, which is like a competitor to let's say like a go high level, right? Like something similar to that. Yeah. We only launched that in January of this year. So it's fairly new, but we do have a lot of users using it. So I definitely say fulfillment is a bigger chunk of our revenue. As far as size, we're almost a hundred employees today at Dashlex full time. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I love hearing these stories. You hear about like Ahrefs did the same thing with uh bootstrapped, you know, no funding, same thing with uh click funnels, right? Like it's really cool to see the growth trajectory um, I'll end on this note and then I'll give you an opportunity to, you know, say where people can sign up and everything. Um, what is, what is the plan? Like in the next few years, you've been doing this for 13 years now. I mean, again, I don't know what your revenue is, but it sounds like you guys are growing insanely fast. You have 30,000 people on the platform. I mean, it sounds like potentially even going public one day is on the horizon. Right. So do you have like, yeah, a, I don't know about public that, <laughs> where we, we like to control everything on the back end. Um, we don't, yeah. Like sit, you know, at a board or a table or anything like that. So I don't know if public is the right thing, maybe possible exit in the future, but nothing uh, short term, not, not, not anything happening soon. Uh, we're having a really good time building the platform and building the company. And I mean, we're going to continue to do it. Um, we're, we're pushing new features to the software side every Tuesday. So every Tuesday, there's new features, new apps. Uh, we're about to launch our full conversations app here in a couple of weeks. We just launched reputation management uh, app last week. And so like, I'm talking about like big updates. We have a pretty big development team, right? Uh, that are constantly right. pushing code every single day uh, or every Tuesday. Um, so um, uh, we're just having fun. I think for us, um, I think our end goal is to make it where agencies have one place to run their entire business. And at the same yeah. time, their customers, which is the businesses that are running their, the, you know, the businesses that they're running can also run their whole business from one platform. We want everything to be in one place. Um, but we also want, we're, we're focused more on the agency side because that's who we serve, right? We only speak to the agency and you know, that's our customer, yeah. right? So our, our our goal is to make the life of an agency owner, the processes of an agency owner as as just the best that it possibly can, the easiest that it possibly can. Um, right. And just continue to focus on that and just make it the best experience possible. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity to share where people can sign up uh, for free. I know I just did. So yeah, for, just go to dashlix.com. I mean, right? yeah. yeah, go to dashlix.com. Uh, you can get your free account there. No credit card required. Go in there, use our free version, play around, see if you like it. We're big believers in growing with the company. We won't cap you off in like two weeks or anything like that and hit you with a paywall. You can literally use this for free forever if that's what you want to do, right? At some yeah. point, you'll grow with us and then you'll jump on one of our paid plans. Paid plans start at 97 bucks a month. So pretty affordable. You run your whole agency, literally all your tools, software is full blown fulfillment team for 97 bucks yeah. a month. If you want to jump on a paid plan, right? So that's the first Fantastic. place. Fantastic. Well, for everybody who's following this podcast for a, a couple months, uh, we will, I would love, I think, I think there might be some collab opportunities in the future. So definitely sign up um, and uh, go, go join the free version. Uh, I, I'm definitely, I've heard about dash clicks for a while and it's really cool to hear the back story from, from Chad. Uh, really inspiring. And for anyone who's listening to this, who's an agency owner and wants to start their own software. I mean, I've been telling you this for months. Now Chad's a living proof that this is the way to go. So I think it's a good move. If you have a good idea and you want to get into the software game, it's easier than ever to get into it. So you should do it. Don't wait. And thank you, Chad, so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, glad I could be here, man. Thank Thanks you for, all, for sharing all the insight. It's very, very helpful. You got it. Thanks so much, guys. And uh, hopefully we'll cross paths inside of the Dashlix platform. Thank you.